my man Hollis. Alright, what's your first question, brother? Well, uh, I said, uh, I just started to listen to you, um, maybe two weeks ago. Oh, okay. So you can just, have you heard occult stuff before? Uh, no, I listened to a little bit of uh, Bobby Hemet. Um, I've, I've been I've been a Christian for years, and mm -hmm. just um, just things that start, start going on within me that just really try to ask questions, you know. Okay. And um, I've been listening. I listened to um, to Ray Hagen and those, you know, there's Ben, but I just really couldn't get into that. Um, that didn't speak to me spiritually. Uh, Ray Hagen. Ray Hagen. You said, um, you said that didn't speak to you spiritually? No, at all. No, because those aren't spiritual. It's not spiritual information or spiritual advice. It is political, basically. Yeah, I felt like I left one one religion to go to the next. Right. Okay. Realize that, that that is not what was speaking to my spirit. Excellent. And, um, and uh, I said, I've listened to Bobby. I've listened to Phil Valentine. And um, it felt like um, I said more of an Afrocentric for me. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to um, Egypt, and I'm like, that was not where I'm at, supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And um, well, so mind you, two two ways to look at that, and and that's interesting you bring that up because a lot of originally what is now occult science which is spirituality or metaphysics, which is closer to spirituality. Um, actually, a cold is closer to metaphysics, but both of those things uh, start approaching the spiritual. The people, before black people got into that, they were into the Afrocentric movement. So the Afrocentric movement led to metaphysics, then the cult, spiritual. So you still have a lot of leftover mentality of a civil rights movement that went to Africa or a religious movement that went to Africa. So why Egypt? Because Egypt has the most outward proof of black people in the ancient world who had a higher science than what we have now. So there's two ways to look at Egypt. From the mundane, Afrocentric, I'm black and I'm proud point of view, or the way I look at it, the way Bobby looks at it, Phil somewhat as well, which is either the metaphysical or the occult aspect as what science were they doing. So, so you don't want to throw away Egypt because you see a lot of people playing dress up and changing their names. You kind of want to say, okay, there's some people who's only going to see this for pride then some people are going to try to figure out what they were actually talking about, what they actually knew in way of spirituality. So you want to kind of keep that in mind. So if you hear me talking about Egypt, you'll hear me shitting on the people who got stuck, but talking about what they call the mystery system in it, which was spirituality. So keep that in mind. You, want to, you, not, you don't want to throw away Egypt because you got a bunch of fools walking around wearing top hats and shit. And I said that, that what, um, uh, got my attention when it comes to how you broke it down. Okay. I mean, because I grew up in the Caribbean, so I never knew much of that at all. Right. You know, more of the British English kind of, you know, education wise. But um, my uh, direction was always spiritual. That's why I even joined religion, trying to, to find that place of who I am, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so I started listening to you, like I said, two weeks ago, and I'm like, I, I've never reached out to anyone. Okay. This is the first time, like, because it really spoke to what it spoke to the things that I was having in my dreams, or just in my in my heart about even uh, the Christ uh, mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. of things. And I'm like, wow, I really need to instead of just I need to reach out to let this brother know I'm here. Okay. And um, where do I go from here? Because again, I'm I'm still I still. I work for a major uh, faith, faith minister, and I'm trying. I know, so I'm going from that transition. I'm, I understand where I'm at. I'm learning where I'm at, so I, I don't allow it to control me. But I realize I have to transition from there. Okay. You know, so well, so 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 the question is basically, where should you go from here? What's a good next step? Yes, exactly. Okay. 
a good next step is starting to get into some of the practices. Um, the human body is a apparatus or a tool to access spirituality. But since religion has taken over, those parts of us that were alive, that were awake, that were strong, are now sleeping, atrophied. So when we hear information like you've heard information, it speaks to something in us. But the parts of us that used to be doing the work can't stand up and rise to the new occasion. So what I've been teaching, um, which is the difference between a lot of folks, even the ones who have taught a cult, is practices. The further you go back in my lectures, the more you start to hear. I'll tell people, this is how you do this. Go home and try this, try this trick, try that trick. Because what you're trying to wake up is your Kundalini energy, which is your life force energy, which is sleep in most people. Black people have the most Kundalini energy, but it's random. So that's why you get black don't crack and we live longer and dance harder and can create more. But that's happening for us randomly as an occultist or as a spiritualist or a metaphysician, um, your goal is to know how to wake up that life force energy and use it at will and at your purpose. So dealing with Kundalini exercises, there's many ways to get there. Breathing, meditation, chakra work, so on and so forth. Ultimately, when that energy rises, it hits here, the third eye. Most of the work that I do is about opening or awakening the pineal gland. That's the first thing that that's the first thing that the first thing I've listened to, uh, I heard and that was like because I've been trying to do the chakras but for some reason with the meditation I couldn't I can't get the, the, my mind to shut up well that that's why I sell that panic pack that's what that's for helps yeah. the chatter but without making a cheap sale there's plenty of ways you can deal with that one of the easiest ways you have like an iPod for music, uh, something you can hear music in your ears? Yeah. You can listen to music and meditate. Meditate is really, all you're really trying to do is get your brain on a singularity or in a zone. So your conscious mind, now I, I teach this in class, so I'm, I'm trying to give you the overall because class is where I go into detail. But your conscious mind, its purpose is to distract you. Because your subconscious mind is what dictates your reality. And to protect you, you need your reality to be a certain way. Certain people need Jesus to be Jesus. Certain people need Muhammad to be Muhammad. If they find out any other reality is shocking. But you can go online right now, find out there's no Jesus tomorrow. But how come everybody hasn't? Because their conscious mind is trying to keep them out of that to make them continue their daily practice. They like themselves at Walmart. They like their kids. They like their car. They like what they have. And they know what they have is because they believe what they believe. Has nothing to do with right or wrong, good or bad, uh, true or not. It is everything to do with comfort and safety. So this is a built in. This is a outward definition of something that's built into the human psyche to protect yourself is called your human ego It's the same mechanism why when someone scares you you flinch because something in you without thinking says i need to protect myself that comes from your ego the thinking apparatus of your ego is your conscious mind so when you are meditating you are trying to speak or communicate with something deeper in you your subconscious mind, which is what dictates your reality. Therefore, your conscious mind is trying to protect you. How so? It starts to give you chatter. It starts to distract you. So it's you really trying to protect yourself from something new. The same way the Christian tries to protect himself from there ain't no Jesus. So knowing this and understanding this, there are techniques in, 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 that you could do to bypass the conscious mind, to bypass what we call the player hater or the, or the security guard. 
You get what I'm saying? So now with that being said, you can listen to music and music, your favorite song will get you in the zone. But if you're doing it for the purpose of meditation, all you have to do is visualize you doing the song, you doing the concert or that person performing for you, whatever floats your boat, where you can stay into the thought frequency for as long as you can. See, when you listen to music, you ain't thinking about no damn chatter. You're thinking about the song in the next lyric. That's yeah. all you have to do to meditate. It's not that hard. The difference is you're going in with a, an intention. Meditation is only programming. So if you're looking for money, for girls, a job, your kids, or whatever, your parents, or whatever, and you, you have to see whatever it is you want in your mind. And then you do a motherfucking concert to it with the music. That's an easy way to meditate. The next level is you have to think of something simple, like an apple. Because you had an apple over a hundred times in your life. You know what it feels like, what it tastes like, what it sounds like when you bite it, what it looks like, and what it smells like. Now you have to capture all those five senses with your mind. So you see the apple in your mind, you're experiencing the apple by touching it, tasting it, eating it, feeling it, and smelling it only in your mind. Something that simple. Then after you felt you can keep your thoughts focused on that apple, move on to a banana. Then move on to some grapes. Then move on to something more complex like a car. A car that you've been in, that you have touched, felt, uh, you didn't taste, but you smell, and so on and so forth. You know what I'm saying? Experience yourself there. Then maybe somewhere like in your bathroom, in your own house or in your living room. Then eventually move on to your parents' house, place that you've been a hundred times, their bathroom, what their room feels like. Visualize. The more you can keep the thought, the more you are building up the will in your mind. Because I told you that those parts of you have gone to sleep. So when you're doing it, first it's going to be hard because it's like doing push-ups. The more you do, the stronger you get. So that's why you start with an apple and you keep moving on. And then eventually you want to go to places you've never been, perhaps. Paris, you know, the, the, the Eiffel Tower or, or the pyramids, some shit like that. The more you start to visualize and can see yourself, what you're actually doing is sending your spirit to these places. And spirit thrives off of imagination, visualization, and your will. So you have to build that up. It eats and survives off of that in visualization and imagination like you eat and survive off of meat and vegetables and starch. Yeah. So it's all about trying to keep that, visualize, that, that visualization, seeing what it is first here before it starts to change into reality. What stops that reality is your conscious mind because it is constantly trying to say, no, yeah. you are what you are. So, because you got to remember, you heard, how old are you? I'm uh, 41. 41? Damn, you look really young. I thought you was like, damn, 19 or some shit. <laughs> so, you've heard at least 40, some, close to 40 years of Jesus, and Jesus yeah. is real. So, there's no, even though you logically know, your spirit is telling you that shit is fake as hell. But consciously, you've been giving to it over and over again, over and over again. That's why you hear more chatter, because the part of you that's been programmed is fighting back. It's saying, don't become something new because I don't know what I'm going to become. Uh, that's a, yes. It's like cause you're saying, well, I know I can't do this, but I want to see what's up with this. And your conscious mind says, wait, 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 you might become something we don't want to become you might start wearing sheets <laughs> and and you know talking funny yeah you know oh peace be unto you the <laughs> lover you might be outside kissing trees uh-uh yeah. we need to stay what we know so when you say i'm gonna try to do something new your mind is saying la 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 nah motherfucker don't do it <laughs> yeah. so as long as you know that's what you're fighting you're not fighting, I can't meditate. You're not fighting, this is not for me. You're not fighting, is good. You're fighting your own mind saying, this is not for you. Because I want to be safe. Yes. 
That's is this the other way you get programmed is through trauma. So I know you heard before, a motherfucker get traumatized and then they don't remember. Like a lot of women in therapy going, I don't know what's wrong with me. And then the therapist going, because your uncle was fucking you. I don't remember that. Because they it was so traumatizing that they blocked it out their mind. That's the way your conscious mind protects you, always blocking. Your subconscious mind absorbs. Your subconscious mind is responsible for magic. So any magic ritual, which I teach in my class, anything you do magically is actually reprogramming your mind. So all the techniques I teach from candle magic, crystals, chakras, I, sh I show, prove, and teach that it's all different versions of reprogramming your subconscious, which is dictates your reality. Your subconscious learns through repetition, symbols, tr trauma. What's repetition? Repeating. So who's the greatest teacher of you? Your parents. They're the ones when all your life sit up straight, say thank you, say thank you. A man does this. A man doesn't do that. Gee, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Go to church. Sit up straight. Cross your legs. Eat your dinner. Better get a job. And then after you go, I hate them motherfuckers. And then you move into your old house and go, I'm finally free. Then find you doing the same shit that they taught you all your life. You put your plates where they told you to put the plates. You put your forks where they told you to put the forks. And you don't even know why the fuck you doing it. See, my mother didn't give a fuck if the cabinets was open. So I leave the cabinets open. But Khadija's stepfather said animals leave the cabinets open. So now she around this motherfucker is static. Why the fuck you leave the cabins open? You under mind control, yeah. nigga. That is so true, man. Because I grew up with my grandmother and she was like a military. You got to make your bed up this way and this way and that. And you probably That's still true. do the shit. Yeah. You probably still do the shit. Some shit you rebel against, but some shit you find yourself doing and repeating and don't know why. Because you have been programmed. Because by them saying it over and over. Or another way to look at it is, and this is something I do tell in my class, I go, does everyone know their ABCs? Everybody, oh yeah, I know your ABCs. I go, no, you don't know them. You have been programmed. Say them backwards. And that's when motherfuckers get stuck. Because you don't know your ABCs backwards. You know them forward because you know A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They send yeah. this repetitious song to you. Niggas don't know Z, Y, W, and all that kind of Z, Y, X, W, R, S, T. They don't know that. So you don't know your alphabets. You've been programmed and you know them from your subconscious mind from saying them over and over again. Repetition. So you've been heard Jesus damn near 40 years of your life. You have to first admit to yourself just because you can say now, uh, Jesus is a fag, he didn't exist, don't mean you over it. It's true. Don't mean you're over it. Based upon the way your mind works, you can't be over it. You're going to have to do things repetitiously within consciousness, within meditation, within ritual, within studying to get as much as you put in out to become something new. Because after enough repetition, the conscious mind, which is the player hater, can't get in the way anymore. Or through symbols. Picture tells a thousand words. So by dealing with your symbology, sigils, symbol work, you can also recalibrate the subconscious mind. So to have these iconic symbols around you, onks and blah, blah, blah. The other thing is trauma and you really don't want that. But that was still used. In Africa, that was called rites of passage. They would beat the shit out you and say you're a man. And you would walk home with your mentality different, not just I'm a man. See, we don't have that now. Actually, in America, they do. When do they say you're a man in America? When you, when you have a kid or... No, legally. Le legally. Not not theoretically, you're a man now, but when the, when the police say you're a man. At 21, right? Really, they'll say that age 18. But here's the thing. Do you know why you said 21? Because you can drink at 21. Yeah. So that's when most 18, you're supposed to be out. You can get the fuck out right now. Yeah. That's when they legally say you're grown. But most people feel mentally 
they're grown because they say now you can go in any bar, any club, and drink. You're a man yep. now, right? Yep. Okay, oh, so right. We're all nothing really changed because you're not more responsible at 21. You're just the same dumb motherfucker who can drink now. Yeah. And in fact, you're dumber because you can drink now. Yes. But what happened mentally? You felt there was a change, right? So understanding that concept, rites of passage in Africa was to set you up mentally with manhood. But since they know 21 just don't make you a man, they'll beat your ass, cut off the tip of your dick. And you went through such trauma, you like, fuck that shit, I'm a man now. They showed that shit in Roots. Remember young Kunta Kente, it was like, who's going to cut their Fatu off first? He stepped up, got his dick cut, he got up, he came back. I'm a motherfucking man now, bitches. That's yeah. my house. And the grandmother went to him and was like, look, you ain't no fucking, you still my grandson, you little punk ass bitch. It ain't really nothing. But in his mind, he felt psychologically ready because they gave him an initiation through trauma. So he felt psychologically ready. All they did was psych out the mind. So ain't nothing like that here for you to psych your mind out. You have to do it through repetition symbols and the discipline. And that's through meditation. So your next step is to start building up the subconscious mind through meditation. You're going to have to study more, listen to more lectures and start taking them book recommendations and start reading more. Because right now you're in a period of you need much more information. The more and more information that you accumulate, the, that's like sperm. But it still has to sit in the womb for nine months, let's just say. Or just a period of completion for it to become a birth. And the birth represents your life changing. Or that's called knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Knowledge is the information. Wisdom is you letting it marinate. Trying some techniques, some things, some meditations, some rituals, some tips and tricks. Understanding is when you know your life has changed to that reality. The birth. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. So you have to get you at a point where you need to accumulate more knowledge. Your next step is starting to discipline your mind to start letting your subconscious mind run your life. Most people, if not damn near all the people on this planet, let their conscious mind run their life because they think that's the real them. So you hear this in metaphysics that you are you you hear white people even say this. You're not your job. You're not your house. You are not who you think you are. Well, what do, what are they talking about for real? What they're talking about is the person called Hollis doesn't exist. He only likes what he's like because we already pointed out that half the shit you did after you thought you were free from your parents was shit from your parents. So how the fuck you know you like it? In fact, that pineapple, how the fuck you know you really like it? You're probably eating it because, number one, you're from the islands. And that's what a, you'll find a lot of people on the islands. So your mother and them had it all the time. So you say they like it. I like. I think I like it. Yeah. The point is, spirit, spiritually, you don't really know. Of course, you go, if you eat and you like it, it's obvious. I'm using an example of other things. The table you have, perhaps, or the or the couch that you're sitting on, the same kind that you had when you grew up. Maybe you only like it because it is the kind you have when you grew up and you're used to it. Who knows how many things in this world that don't exist that you don't know exist that you might you don't even know. That's the point. You only think that. So you are not your job. You are not your couch. You are not that. You are the lump sum of what you've been socialized into. When you're dealing with spirituality, you are starting to raise up the sleeping part of you. The part of you that is many lifetimes. And has an agenda that's bigger than Hollis. And then once you start to understand that, once you start to work and communicate and raise that up, your life around you or reality around you starts to make beneficial to what it is you truly are. And that's a God. So it, it, it is no way but up from here when you're dealing with this. No way but up. So just by dealing with your natural, because people, well, when I do this, will I get money? Will I get a girl? Will I get this? 
that's obvious because if you're dealing with your nature, your nature is a rich man. Your nature is a prosperous man. Your nature is all about the pussy. So all of that shit's going to come. Any of that material stuff, don't even focus on that. Focus on the true self and all the material shit will line up. Because if you focus with your nature, your nature is wealth. Yes. Is prosperity. So focus on your nature, which is the spirituality of God, which is what you are. And that should have worked out. So meditation and, and starting to build up your mind. Those techniques, get a, a basic book on meditation as well. That'll do you okay. some justice. And if what I said doesn't work, still look for techniques that may work. Because, like I said, it's all about how your mind acts and reacts. But the music is, anybody, everybody can get into music. So if you got some headphones, and you really don't need headphones. Head, headphones are better because you can zone out everything else. Yeah. Close your eyes and and visualize a music video in your head. Either you doing the song or someone performing for you. What I used to do is have them, I used to see them right here performing for me. I was up close. Yeah. And before you know it, you start going into a zone of meditation. And when you go into the zone of meditation, what meditation is? is the conscious mind goes to sleep and the subconscious mind opens up to the your intention so you always have an intention you know you're doing it for money you're doing it for relaxation mostly you want to do it just to have the experience that means you're doing it because you're pure of heart that's where you want to be that's the ultimate most people have an agenda so they usually get stuck in their agenda or their agenda is human based and small minded you know, pussy, uh, uh, material shit. That trust that will come if you be pure of heart in your spirituality. So with your spirituality, what you want to do is close your eyes and say, I just want to know the next thing I need to do. I want to know my next step. You meditate on that. So if you ask me, what's your next step? You meditate on what's my next step and spirit, your spirit will guide you what to do next. Every time you cannot let yourself down. This is how our mind works. So it doesn't work for one person and not the next in the laws of Tehuti, which are the absolute laws of this universe, the absolute laws of the universe, either the third or fourth, or perhaps even the fifth law. It's called the law of cause and effect. Every effect has a cause. Every cause has an effect, which means everything you do on this planet has an effect. Every effect that you feel on this planet has a cause. There's no such thing as coincidence. Nothing just happens. There's no accidents. If there's an accident or a coincidence, all that is, is the law of cause and effect that you didn't recognize. But cause and effect is an absolute. This also tells us that every time you light a candle, close your eyes to meditate and uh, hold the crystal, call a spirit, pour a libation, deal with fairies. That means that's what? A cause, which means it must have an effect. Which tells you magic must work. Must have an effect. The real science is you need to be able to understand the effects of what you do. And that's where study comes in. To be able to know, first and foremost, you light a candle, you do a meditation, there will be an effect. The harder you go, the harder the effect. So never doubt in your mind that this shit don't work. Never. It will. It cannot not work based upon cause and effect. So have that confidence. You just got to take your time. Keep working at it. Remember, you're building up muscles. So you, you don't look for, and don't look for nothing to happen. Just look. Just know that you are doing the work. And that's when it's really going to happen. 
When you start looking for things to happen, what did you do? You put your conscious mind back in it, and it's the player hater. So it's going to hide it from you. You understand? Yes. It's going to hide it from you. So the more you can keep your fucking Hollis out of it, the more you're doing, the better you're doing. So you don't say, I'm going to meditate to try to get a girl. Because once you say, I did the meditation, and let's say you did that to the fullest, your conscious mind says, oh, hell no. We're going to keep failing at this because we're used to that. You get what I'm saying? So you yes. want to say, I did it to get a girl, and don't think about it no more. And then if you ain't got no girl, don't think, well, it didn't work. Do it again. Keep doing it. And stop thinking about it. You get what I'm saying? This is a way of doing it or being pure of heart. No agenda. Just doing it because you want to do it. You want to know. And that's when the shit works. Because now you're uninterrupting the subconscious mind, which dictates the reality. How do you know it? When you go to a psychiatrist, what are you there trying to get to? The subconscious mind. You go to a psychiatrist and you tell him the problem. Doctor, I shit in a diaper, smearing on the wall, and I love to wear diapers. I'm a grown man. You can tell him all the reasons. You already know the problem. You already know the reasons. I find it sexually whatever. As a psychiatrist, he's not looking for your conscious answer. He's looking for what happened that made that sexual for you, right? So you're talking, talking, talking. What's the first thing he asks you? Tell me about your childhood. Tell me about your mother. Why? Because those are the ones who programmed you in the subconscious mind. When you didn't know what the fuck a Hollis was, they the one that told you you was Hollis. Your name is Hollis. Hollis, sit down. Hollis, stand up. Hollis, go to bed. Hollis, brush your teeth. Hollis, don't do that. Hollis, I'm going to beat your ass. Hollis, eat cereal. Hollis, eat steak. Hollis, Hollis don't act like that. No, Hollis is quiet. Hollis is this guy. They told you all of that bullshit. That is so true. So they programmed you. So the psychiatrist says, tell me about your mother. Then you tell the story. Then you say, well, I had a babysitter who used to change my diaper. And I was so turned on. Then he goes, now we have our reason why you like to wear diapers now. So what did he do? You said, you know something? I didn't even remember that shit. But talking to you, I remember it now. And why? Because it dictated your reality, even though consciously you didn't even know. You know what you liked consciously, but you didn't know why. Why? Because your conscious mind protects you from something. Because perhaps you were embarrassed when the babysitter was doing this. So your conscious mind said, this is embarrassing. My, she's just changing my diaper. Because you don't know what that means. She's changing your diaper. But it's not like when my mom changes my diaper, something's happening. I'm embarrassed. Protect myself. But it's so strong, it's still your reality. How is it your reality? Now you're 41 at the club with a diaper on, doing this yeah. shit. And then you like, I don't know why I like to do that. So when you hear, see all these white men, they like to get choked. They like to get beat. They like to get this. Then you find out when the psychi psychiatrist talks, most of the white people like to be dominated because they have such a dominant role in society and it's an imbalance. They like the, the least person on the totem pole in their psychological mind to dominate them, a black woman. So most black women are beating white ass all day because the black woman represents the lowest on the totem pole, which is sick anyway. <clears throat> Not just because she's a black woman, because the fact they think women are low, because you know how they treat their women. Women, is, the black woman is the highest on the totem pole, but they think she's the lowest. So they want her to beat his ass because he believes he's the highest on the totem pole. Psychological. So that's what you're dealing with when you're dealing with spirituality. The part of you that's trapped behind the fake part of you call Hollis. And everything you do is trying to get to that part of you. Everything you do. So that's the trick. Meditation is the first way you start learning how to shut down the fake you and tell your real self what it is you want. Candles, I told you, it's about symbols, repetition. Candles are nothing but symbols. The flickering flame also speaks to the subconscious mind, bypasses the conscious mind. 
That's how it works. You light a candle with an intention. The flame talks directly to the subconscious mind, gets you in a meditative state, mm -hmm. and your intention comes true. 